Hey, hello everybody, eu sou o Adir Ferreira e hoje temos um vídeo com uma entrevista com um cara do sul dos Estados Unidos. Ele vai nos explicar um pouco sobre como é o sotaque de lá e algumas características que vão te ajudar a identificar se o cara é do sul ou não. A gente vai escutar essa entrevista com ele, depois eu volto para reler tudo bonitinho e explicar alguma coisa que você possa não ter entendido. Alright? Vamos lá? Ok, so hi! My name is Sean and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Southern accent. I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and in Virginia we also have the Southern accent. So what happens is in the Southern accent we use a lot of ain't. I ain't going there, for example, is one. And another one is where we have verbs that we don't use the S at the end. So for example, my stomach hurt. Okay, and we have to realize that the Southern accent is used both by blacks and whites in the South. Okay? And here's some more examples. Let's see if you can actually understand what I'm saying. That cake gonna take about an hour to bake. Your ring, she pregnant? They need to stop all that wrestling in my yard. Okay? So let's see if you can actually put those together actually. And another thing we have to say is the stress of the word. Instead of saying behind, behind. Guitar, guitar. Okay, and for example, no use of the auxiliary verb. Instead of saying, I've seen him, I seen him last week. Or, I seen him yesterday. So, what actually happens with the southern accent? It's very interesting because even today, people still look at the southern accent as people who are uneducated. So we have to remember it has nothing to do with your education, just the way that you speak. And now I have a very interesting story. I had no idea that I had a southern accent until I went to university and many students from the north commented on the way that I said certain words. They said my pronunciation sounded strange to them but that they could understand me nonetheless. Okay? So now some of the other things that we say that are some fixed expressions. When it's cold outside, instead of saying put on a jacket, we say You better put a little something on your shoulders, okay? And instead of saying to iron a shirt, for example, we say to mash a shirt. In many places they say to mash a shirt. And even instead of saying to push a button, to mash a button. So mash, if you're ever in the South, can mean to iron and to press. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little bit about the Southern accent where I'm from in Virginia. Okay? And so, like we say, y'all come back and see us now, you hear? Então nós temos aqui, ó. Ok, so hi, oi. My name is Sean, que pode também ser escrito com S-E-A-N. Essas duas escritas são comuns e a pronúncia é Sean. My name is Sean and I'm gonna tell you, oh, I'm going to tell you, vou te contar a little bit about the southern accent. Um pouquinho sobre o acento do sul, ó. Southern. Sul é south. Agora, como adjetivo, a gente diz southern. Southern. About the southern accent. I'm from Richmond, Virginia. Ele é de Richmond, Virginia. And in Virginia, we also have the southern accent. Nós também temos o acento do sul. So, what happens is... Então, o que acontece é o seguinte. É uma frase fixa, ó. What happens is, in the southern accent, no sotaque do sul, we use a lot of ain't. Você vai ter um link para dois vídeos com ain't aqui do canal, tá? Tá aí na descrição do vídeo. We use a lot of ain't. I ain't going there. Eu não vou lá. Eu não estou indo lá. For example, is one. É um. And another one, então, o primeiro uso é do ain't. Is where we have verbs that we don't use the S at the end. Nós temos verbos onde não usamos o S no final. No simple present com he, she, it. So, for example, my stomach hurt. Seria o correto? My stomach hurts. Meu estômago dói, está doendo. Ok, we have to realize, temos que perceber, que nos darmos conta that the southern accent, que o sotaque do sul, is used both by blacks and whites in the south, ok? É usado tanto por negros quanto brancos no sul, ok? 
And here's some more examples. Ó, que ele erra. Então, aqui seria, and here are some more examples, que é plural. Tá? Mas é o inglês menos gramatiqueiro. Aqui as pessoas vão falar, and here's mais um substantivo no plural. Let's see, vejamos, if you can actually, se você consegue realmente understand what I'm saying. Entendeu o que eu estou dizendo? Ele vai dar alguns exemplos. That cake gonna take about an hour to bake. That cake is going to take about an hour to bake. Esse bolo vai levar mais ou menos uma hora para assar. Então, gone e about, eles vão cortando aqui. Ó. That cake gonna take about an hour to bake. You reckon she's pregnant? Do you reckon she's pregnant? Então, você percebeu, você acha que ela está grávida? Olha só, aqui eu tirei o verbo to be e também esse do auxiliar. They need to stop all their wrestling in my yard. They need to stop all their wrestling. Outra característica é esse apóstrofo tirando o G. Wrestling. Wrestling. Não é wrestling. Wrestling. A pronúncia muda. Ok. So, let's see if you can actually put those together, actually. Olha só, ele usa actually duas vezes para repetir. Então, geralmente as pessoas falam assim no dia a dia. Nada é muito gramaticalmente amarradinho. Então, vamos ver aqui se você realmente consegue entender isso Realmente. And another thing we have to say is the stress of the word. E outra coisa que temos que dizer é a ênfase da palavra, a sílaba tônica, a tonicidade. Instead of saying behind, em vez de dizer behind, dizem behind. Guitar, guitar. Ok? Então eles vão mudando essa sílaba tônica aqui nas palavras. And, for example, no use of the auxiliary verbs. Não tem uso dos verbos auxiliares. Aqui ele dá um outro uso errado do present perfect, mas que os nativos cometem esse erro. Porque ele diz, I've seen him last week. Gramaticamente seria, I saw him last week. Mas na linguagem oral ele vai dizer, I seen him. I seen him. I seen him last week. Or, I seen him yesterday. Então, eu o vi na semana passada, eu o vi ontem. Isso aqui está gramaticamente incorreto. All right? So, what actually happens with the southern accent, o que realmente acontece com o sotaque do sul, is very interesting. É muito interessante because even today, inclusive hoje, people still look at the southern accent. As pessoas ainda olham para o sotaque do sul as people who are uneducated, como pessoas que não estudaram. Então, educated é pessoa que tem formação, pessoas que não se formaram, pessoas que não têm universidade. So, we have to remember... Então, temos que nos lembrar. It has nothing to do with your education. Que não tem nada a ver com a sua educação, com a sua formação. Just the way that you speak. Só a maneira que você fala. And now I have a very interesting story. Agora eu tenho uma história muito interessante. I had no idea that I had a southern accent. Eu não tinha ideia que eu tinha o um sotaque do sul. Until I went to university. Até que eu fui para a faculdade. And many students from the north. Muitos alunos do Norte commented on the way I said certain words. Comentaram a maneira que eu dizia algumas palavras, certas palavras. They said my pronunciation sounded strange. Diziam que a minha pronúncia soava estranho to them, para eles. But that they could understand me nonetheless. Mas que, apesar disso, eles conseguiam me entender. Ok, so... Now, some of the things that we say that are some fixed expressions. Algumas das coisas que nós dizemos que são expressões fixas. When it's cold outside, quando está frio lá fora, instead of saying, em vez de dizer, put on a jacket, coloca um casaco, we say, you better put a little something on your shoulders. É melhor você colocar uma coisinha nos ombros. Ok, and instead of saying to iron, passar... A shirt, for example, uma camisa, we say to mash a shirt. Eles usam mash a shirt. In many places, they say to mash a shirt. And even instead of saying to push a button, apertar um botão, to mash a button. Eles usam to mash a button. So mash, if you're ever in the south, se alguma vez você estiver no sul, can mean to iron and to press. Okay? So, I hope you enjoyed this little bit about the southern accent. Espero que você tenha gostado desse pouquinho, né? Desse pedacinho sobre o sotaque do sul. And where I'm from in Virginia, ok? 
e de onde eu sou, em Virginia. And so, like we say, então, como a gente diz, y'all come back and see us now, you hear? Y'all, que é you all, que é vocês, é bem do sul, y'all, tá? Y'all come back, voltem, and see us now, e nos visitem, you hear? Aqui é you também, escutou, tá entendido? Então, essa foi a explicação, agora nós vamos escutar essa entrevista de novo, e a gente se vê em breve. Ok, so, hi! My name is Sean, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Southern accent. I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and in Virginia we also have the Southern accent. So what happens is, in the Southern accent, we use a lot of ain't. I ain't going there, for example, is one. And another one is where we have verbs that we don't use the S at the end. So for example, my stomach hurt. Okay, and we have to realize that the Southern accent is used both by blacks and whites in the South. Okay? And here's some more examples. Let's see if you can actually understand what I'm saying. That cake gonna take about an hour to bake. You ring, she pregnant? They need to stop all that wrestling in my yard. Okay? So let's see if you can actually put those together actually. And another thing we have to say is the stress of the word. Instead of saying behind, behind. Guitar, guitar. Okay, and for example, no use of the auxiliary verb. Instead of saying, I've seen him, I seen him last week. Or, I seen him yesterday. So, what actually happens with the southern accent? It's very interesting because even today, people still look at the southern accent as people who are uneducated. So we have to remember it has nothing to do with your education, just the way that you speak. And now I have a very interesting story. I had no idea that I had a southern accent until I went to university and many students from the north commented on the way that I said certain words. They said my pronunciation sounded strange to them but that they could understand me nonetheless. Okay? So now some of the other things that we say that are some fixed expressions. When it's cold outside, instead of saying put on a jacket, we say You better put a little something on your shoulders, okay? And instead of saying to iron a shirt, for example, we say to mash a shirt. In many places they say to mash a shirt. And even instead of saying to push a button, to mash a button. So mash, if you're ever in the South, can mean to iron and to press. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little bit about the Southern accent where I'm from in Virginia. Okay? And so, like we say, y'all come back and see us now, you hear?